Hi guys, welcome back to Chaz's No Bullshit Reptile Advice. Uh, this is episode 17. We are getting through them at a rate of knots, which is good. We're helping people out. People seem pleased that we're answering the questions. You'll notice I'm back in the confines of my car once again. In truth, it is just easier. It's relatively sound cancelling. I can go somewhere quiet to record the video. I can put the phone on silent. And it's, I'm not going to get disturbed while I'm making it. Uh, it's just hard to organise sometimes, whether it be in the shop or at home with a kid who screams his lungs out on Fortnite on the Xbox and I end up wanting to kill him. So today's question comes from Jason Earl. I have a question regarding brumation and cool down cycle. For snakes, is it necessary or beneficial for a common pet snake what's one of them? To go through a brumation period or is this just for breeders? And if so, what are some of the temperatures for different species of snakes and what length of time? I think it would make for an educational video. Thanks in advance for your time, Jason. Well, Jason, you're more than welcome. Thank you for the question. It's the first question I've answered by you. Um, it would make for an educational video, although potentially this forum isn't the right place for it. But it is a good idea for one of the guide videos. I'll touch on it today. But I think that I need to probably give more species specifics. This is more general advice, sound bites, my thoughts. If I'm going to give specifics, I'd want to make sure that I've got it right. Um, I'm not superhuman. I want to check that the temperatures I quote are correct. But I can give some some experience, advice, and 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 general thoughts on what you've asked quite happily. Um, beneficial for the common pet snake. Like I just said, what's one of them? We established on the episode we did yesterday that we did a starter snake guide that contained 83 species of snake. That included pythons from Australia, pythons from Africa, boa constrictors from North America, uh, boa constrictors from Turkey through India to Africa, um, North American uh colubrids which would be um, corn, rat, king, milk, bull, pine, gopher, uh, water snake, garter snake and then European rat snakes, European water snakes, there's a list that goes on. The picture I'm trying to paint is they're from a vast area, most of the earth in honesty. So to be able to give blanket suggestions for them would be impossible. What we need to work out is where the region of origin is. So, are the animals equatorial? Are they within the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn? Or are they north and south of these tropics? That will then tell us the amount of action required, roughly, to, that we would be required to make to brumate our animals. Whilst brumation is a exercise to increase fertility, virility, fecundancy of our animals for breeding. It's also a fat burning process and keeps our animals in tip top condition. Is it strictly necessary? No. Is the risk for obesity increased by not doing it on the species that would normally have it in the wild? Yes. So do you then need to watch the intake of food to make sure your animals don't become obese? Well, yes. So this is called the application of common sense, uh, which just seems missing at times in this hobby. It's crazy. The lack of common sense application is mad. So we know that temperatures at the equator are relatively stable, and they're relatively stable year-round, so the need for any sort of protracted or extended brumation period will, is a mute point. We're not going to do it. To cite the green tree python video we did the other day, Jaipur and Port Moresby, which are Irian Jaya or West Proper and Proper New Guinea respectively, are within three degrees Celsius of one another all year round. So that's stable as it gets really. So their brumation is more based on baromic pressure, wet and dry seasons. Temperature isn't the variable that changes there. As we move out into the tropics, we know that there are animals such as say the common boas that benefit from a, a, a cooler night. We know that the royal pythons can benefit from it. Um, the the Retix and Burmese can benefit from it. Some of the other Indo pythons possibly. Um, certainly as we start moving towards the tropics themselves we start hitting 
some of the carpet pythons, the spotteds, the children's, the rosy boas, the sand boas. And they may require a bit more in the way of cooling on a night time, but they'll probably still enjoy a, a warm summer and all the rest of it. But we're not talking about hibernation, you know, full on depths of cold. And that's when we start getting into what we would term to be temperate regions, where they're going to have snowfall and they're going to have uh, their leaves dropping off the trees and, you know, there'll be ground frost and all the rest of it. And that would be in Northern Europe, um, North America, certain regions of North America. So we're thinking New Jersey, New York, Maine, New Hampshire, Oregon, Northern California, Minnesota, um, England, Northern France. Um, Germany these sorts of regions we're going to have to offer brumation to get sperm and egg production to work properly the proper terms for these are spermatogenesis and oogenesis um, and to be able to increase fertility of breeding attempts we're going to need good sperm, good eggs to do that and do it properly and hedge our bets the best way possible we brumate our animals so there is pre-brumation cycling that we need to do which is feed cycling where the females food intake gets ramped up so we can build up body fat stores the males less so but they will need some extra food pre-brumation then they're going to get their their bowels cleared out over a two three week period regular baths then we begin the brumation process slowing them down cooling them down we reduce photo period the daytime high and nighttime low both Dip. and that's a proper full brumation whereas our tropical style brumation for boids, uh, boas, pythons uh, as written in um, the reproductive husbandry of pythons and boas by Ross and Marzek is a shorter normal day temperature but a longer cooler night and the day actually could even be a degree or so warmer but rather than being a 12-12 split, split, the day goes to 8 hours, the night goes to 16. So it's a longer, cooler night. And the night would drop by about 3 or 4 degrees. So that's how you would do your cycle for them. Um, the, the length depends on where they're from. The further north or the further south you go, the longer the brumation will be. Again, this is common sense. So we're working from the equator being relatively neutral and stable. And then as we start radiating out up towards the... Uh, north and south pole it gets more extreme um, and the more extreme it gets um, generally the hardier the snakes are one of the most hardy snakes on the planet the uh, common adder uh, vipera beerus almost i think it almost occurs up into the uh, and its cousins almost occurs up into the arctic circle those things are bomb proof and the fact that they live out on the fields around here when um, it's as harsh as it is it's testament to just how tough they are because some of the hills around Sheffield and the, the peak ranges peak districts and things we've got around here they're pretty harsh environments for a reptile so th these uh, these snakes are pretty tough um, the active range of a snake so we've got daytime high and nighttime low gets bigger the further north or south we go so from the equator what delineates or that demarks a intermediate or a advanced level snake is i call it bandwidth the bandwidth between daytime high and nighttime low and generally the stuff within the tropics if we start migrating outside the daytime high or nighttime low this is when bad sheds constipation regurgitation and then respiratory infection colds bad sheds oh we're okay now that bandwidth from daytime high to nighttime low is pretty strict. And the control that you have to have is going to be pretty tight. As soon as we start moving into the tropics, oh, suddenly now we've got a bit more bandwidth. So maybe these animals are slightly more hardy than the truly equatorial gear. And we can sort of meander a bit more. And we can maybe not quite have as much control, but they're going to forgive us. Then we hit the temperate gear, corn snakes. Um, grass snakes, American water snakes. Oh wow, we're active throughout this whole range of temperature. So I'm not catching a cold. I'm not regurgitating my food. I can pretty much live anywhere. That's what makes an easy beginner species. The fact that they'll forgive you for your fuck ups. Now, yes, we have a prescribed temperature, and we're going to keep it to that because we're not idiots. We're not taking the piss with our snakes. We want to keep them right. 
But say for example we don't keep them right or something goes wrong or the stat fails or what all is not lost, the snake's fine because the species is pretty much bomb proof and that's why we use temperate species as beginner species because they're the hardiest of species. As soon as they're from the tropics we have complicating variables including humidity, baromic pressure, airflow, uh, fungal infections, bacterial infections. These are the problems of the intermediate and advanced. So for breeding purposes they are brumated it isn't just for breeders it is for people wanting to replicate the life cycle of their snake if you want to breed them and you want to get make sure that you have got high fertility and good litters you will brumate if it's necessary if they're from within the tropics you may find you may or may not do they could still breed and they may still be fertile you'll find that many of the python and boa breeders of snakes within the tropics will still brumate and cycle their animals um, because it increases the risks of um, shitty litters and then uh, if they're equatorial it's generally more wet season dry season baromic pressure humidity that are the triggers um, as noted with the green trees and paul using thunderstorms to trigger his snakes to breed so I hope that's of use. I will cover that because I think it's an interesting one and maybe have a, a better look at the way that the animals are spread out and then the temperature ranges and maybe we could pick one at the equator, at the tropic and then up towards the north of the range and look at what our average daytime high, nighttime low, those sorts of things are and the way that we would then have to manipulate the environments of our snakes to make uh, them happy and get them to breed. So Jason, I think that was a really interesting question. Uh, I hope it's that's of use i've not meandered and talked crap for too long uh, and that you found it useful we'll keep the videos coming and we'll see you again soon cheers guys